Thank you. Blessed be the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't know why the Lord is busy with this house to such a degree as He is at this, at this point of time. With the kind of messages that He's giving us, I don't understand why. The only conclusion that I can come to is that He's busy cleaning us. He's busy preparing us for something bigger. You know, the world is, is very is in such a dire straits that they don't know where to turn to, where to go to. And if we are not going to be the hands, the feet, and the voice of Jesus Christ, then nothing is going to work. Then this world will never be saved. And every person in this world will never have the opportunity of meeting Christ. If they're not going to meet Christ through your and my testimony, they are not going to meet Christ ever. Because less and less people are attending churches, less and less people are reading the Bible, less and less people are even hearing about Jesus and interested in about Jesus. Why? Because what the, the, the message that the church is portraying to the world out there is not about the good news of Christ. It's all about finances, all about fame, all about God will bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you so that I can be blessed again. It's the wrong message. The message that Jesus died for is that there's salvation, there's healing, there's deliverance. You can be set free, you can be forgiven, and you can go to, ever, to the everlasting life with Christ. And most of all, you can have a new life in Christ. All forgiven. All forgiven. Amen. Those who were here Wednesday night will, will, will understand what I say. God is busy building His church. He wants to resurrect His church. But all that God needs from you and me is two things. Obedience and to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. And if we are unwilling and we are not in obedience towards God, God the Father, listen to me, with all due respect to my Father and even His Spirit, none of them can even do anything with you. If you are in rebellion against God, God cannot use you. He is not going to use you. And He's definitely not going to speak to you. The Bible says the Spirit stands at the door and is knocking. Andre, just speak me a little bit softer, please. The Spirit is knocking on our heart's doors. If we are opening. He says, this is the words He says. He says, if we are opening. If we are opening. He will come in. Not when. If. So there's a chance that people will not open for Jesus. And the modern society proclaims that it's even less chance that people will open their hearts to Christ. Do you know when people open their hearts to Christ? Do you know what circumstances? When they are at the point where there's nobody that can help them. Then they will run and seek and find Christ. ASAP. Either when they are, in the, in the, when they are uh, 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 um, getting diagnosed with an illness that is to death, or their finances is to such a degree that nobody can save them, or they are in trouble, then people usually try to find God because they want to use Him as a spare wheel. But my God is not a spare wheel. He's not. He's not even the engine. He's everything. You can't use my God as a spare wheel. Whenever you need him, just push on his button. No, 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 no. He says, give me your heart. He says, now that you hear, that the time is here that when you hear my voice, don't harden your heart, but listen to my voice. Obey it. Amen. All right, this morning, the Lord wants to speak to us once again. A very serious message. And I want you to open your Bibles this morning for me in Judges 16. Judges 16. Judges 16. <clears throat> Praise
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. While you're paging, I want to just say again what I said Wednesday night. If you are going to be cut from your church or from the, um, a ministry, wherever you are in the world, if you are getting cut, I want you to understand something. You know, there's two reasons why you can be cut. One is, you're busy with in the wrong ministry or doing the wrong things, but your heart is right, then God will remove you from that place. The second one is, is if God is sifting the ministry and you're falling out, you must know God has sifted you, not men. God has sifted you due to your heart. And you have to go to the Lord and ask Him, what's wrong with my heart, Lord? What do I short? Right, let's read from Judges 16 as from verse 13. It's quite a long piece. This is where Samson uh, and has, has met Delilah. And many of, of you are known with the passage and the parable. He says, and Delilah, verse 13 says, And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto hit, hit, thus has mocked me, thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be, strong, be, be, be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my, of my head with the, the web, and she fastened it, the web now, with the, with the pin, and said to, unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he wake up of his sleep and went away with the pin of, uh, of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee. Listen to, I want to tell you, I want, to, I want you to emphasize certain passages for you. You must, you must listen. He says, and she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me therewith, or the year with thy great strength life. And it came to pass, when she passed him daily, or pressed him daily with her words, and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. There, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a, Nazar a Nazarite unto, the, unto God from my mother's womb. If I have shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had stole her all his heart, she said, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me his heart, uh, all his heart. Then the lord of the Philistines came up unto her, and brought money in their, in their hand, and she made him sleep upon her knees. Listen to what he says. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for the man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awake out of the sleep and said, I will go out as, are, as, at, other, as, as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not, and he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with feathers of brass 
and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then I want you to just to page around for me, and I want you to read with me verse 28. And he says, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines of my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two pillars upon, the, and upon which the house stood, uh, and on which he, it was borne up, and of, the, and of the one of his right hand and of the one on his right, left hand. And Samson said, let me die. His, his wish, wish was to die. He says, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord and upon all the people that were with, here with, uh, therein. So the dead, listen to what he says, the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Meaning that the people that died that day with him was more than, the, than all the people he slew in his whole life. That was more than 10,000. All right. I want to speak to you this morning uh, about what's happening when we sleep with the enemy. How many times are we in a situation or situations where we have to make choices and decisions? And you see the Bible also says that sin is luring at us. Sin is luring at our door. Is that right? Lurking. Thank you. Luring, lurking. Sin is lurking at our door. And he's looking for someone to devour. We are in a world, and a world is system. We are in a fleshly body that is connected to the world and the worldly system, and which is desiring the worldly and fleshly things. Have you noticed that in your life? That it's, a, it's a, sometimes a huge battle to do the right thing and not to accompany the flesh or giving the flesh his, his desire. Is, have you noticed that? You see, so often we know exactly what God wants from us. We know exactly, like Samson, he said, and he confessed this, he says, I was a Nazarite unto the God from my mother's womb. He knew he was called from his mother's womb to be this warrior for God. He knew what was his calling. He knew what was his destiny. He knew everything. And the most important thing that he knew is he knew where the power of God was laid up or locked up or captured in his life. He had a secret that God gave him and says, this is your me and mine, your secret. This is where the power is lying that I give you. And how many times are we having also a secret with God? We know exactly where and what to do to have the power of the Holy Spirit. But then there's a Delilah that's coming into our lives. Circumstances. Things that's happening. Things that we desire. Things that sometimes the, 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 the desire is more than we want for God. Things or situations. Circumstances. Wealth. Uh, what do you call it? Fame. So many things that can disturb and distorted our idea, our calling for God. And how many times, like, like Samson, have we been misled? 
Every single time that we found ourselves in this circumstances or this idea or this wealth or this chase of the money or, or whatever it might be in your life, even every time that we follow that, we've been deceived. And the only plan that Satan had for our lives was to make us powerless. You see, Satan is playing a game with the human race. And he knew and he knows exactly which button to push in our lives to make us what? A slave like, like Samson. Because you see, the idea after, after, uh, behind Delilah wasn't to love him. It was to destroy him. It was to get a hold of the, of, the, of, the, of the secret that he had, where his power between, his connection between him and God was, that she can cut that connection between him and God, that she can make him a slave for the enemy. How many Philistines did he slew? The Bible says that one, one instance, he slew what, 10,000 with a, a, donkey, a donkey jaw. One instance, just one instance. 10,000. Now, have you gotten that picture? Did you try to imagine that picture in your mind? One man, 10,000 men. I mean, it's crazy. It's really crazy that, no, that 10,000 people can't get a hold and can't bind one man. I mean, if they just fall on him, he will be... But they couldn't. The Bible says he slew 10,000 people with one donkey bone. Jawbone. The power of God, you don't understand. The power of God is all we need. The power of God was all that Samson needed in his whole life to do the will of the Father. There was instances where, they, where he ripped gates out of their sockets. They couldn't bind him. There's nothing that they could found, that Delilah could find to bind him. Everything that she, binds, that she bound him with, she, he ripped apart. You see, every time that Satan is trying to bind you and me, we are supposed to rip loose, to rip it apart. Because Satan is not able, he should not be able to bind the, the child of God with anything. Due to the power of the Holy Spirit that's, li that's living within us. The power of God that we have. Satan is not supposed to bind the church of God at all. But it's because the church went to sleep with the enemy. And we betrayed, we betrayed our secret place with God. We told the enemy where, our, where we get our power. We tell the enemy what our weaknesses is. And he knows exactly where to hit us and to make us powerless. And then after he, took, uh, he takes our eyes out, he makes us a slave for him. Is that God's will? Definitely not. Samson was not called to be a slave for the Philistines. He was called to slay them. He was called to uphold the law of God. Because he says himself, I was called to be a Nazarite unto the Lord from my mother's womb. What have you been called from your mother's womb? What have you been called to do? You see, all of us has been called by the Father to be His child, number one. Number two, to be His warrior. To win souls, Matthew 28, 19. To, then Mark 16, verse, uh, verse 17 says, And these signs will follow. We are not supposed to be slaves or to be enslaved by Satan and cause us to be powerless, render us with no eyes, no no. No gifts of the Spirit, because that's what the eyes is, is the gifts of the Spirit. You see, Satan wants to take away the gifts of the Spirit, because then we can't see in the Spirit. We can't, we can't visualize, we can't pick up in the Spirit what's happening. He wants to make us blind. When he's got us blind, and he take our power away, the Bible says he put us in cuffs, or in cuffs. He binds us, and he puts us on a mill to mill for him, like a donkey. All around, every single day, of in every moment of every day, all around, all around, doing His will and His plans. If we see for too long as the church been blind, for too long with the church has been sleeping with the enemy. That's why we became powerless. That's why we, we became blind. 
That's why we are not at the, at the forefront of the war anymore because most of the church is in a, in a, in a, in a little room milling for Satan all around every single day around the little same little axle all around every moment of every day and we don't even know what is happening around us because Satan encaptivated us captivated us to such a degree that we don't know what's happening around us we don't hear the voice of God we don't see the, the miracles of God we're not in the presence of God because why our connection has been broken we are blind and I read this morning very carefully because the Bible, so many times have I heard the story about Samson. And the story was that, we, that the Sunday school and everybody is teaching you is that when he stood between the pillars, his hair all of a sudden started growing. Is that what you've been taught? Go and read the Bible again. It's not true. It's not. It's a lie. The Bible explicitly says, after his head was shaven, his hair started growing again. But the sad part of it is, the power of God was not restored, even if his hair was grown again. Go read it again, very closely. The only time that the power of God was restored in his life is when he stood with his hair already grown. He stood between those two pillars and he called out to God, he says to the Father, he says, please see me. Now hear my voice. I want to avenge myself on these Philistines for my two eyes. Then the power of God came down. The moment that he bent, the Bible says, the Bible says he bowed. The Bible doesn't say he stood there and his hair started growing. No, 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 no. Go and read it again. The Bible explicitly says, after his head was shaven, his hair started growing again. But the power of God was not automatically restored. So the bad, the, the bad side of the whole thing, sleeping with the enemies, we lose our connection, we lose everything, we lose our eyes, although our secret might grow again. The connection between us and God is not automatically restored. So my brother, my sister, the pastor, Domini priest, whatever you might call yourself this morning, it does not matter. If you sleep with the enemy, your power with God is not automatically, the connection with God, the secret with God is not automatically rest being restored when you come out of there. You see, Samson had to repent. Father, hear me. Hear me that I might revenge, that I might revenge my powerlessness, my secret that I've lost, my calling that I've lost. Strengthen me again. But how many times are we sleeping with the enemy? And you know what? We are playing games with the enemy like Samson played with Delilah. She played a game with him. And every time he told her a lie, where, the, where his strength was lying. And then she would get upset when he breaks the ropes or the, whatever she tied him with. The verse that I read to you, she says, three times you have mocked me. And the Bible says, she kept on, listen to me, the Satan will keep on, keep on knocking at your door. She, the Bible says, she, she pressed him daily. She pressed him daily daily to get the knowledge of the secret of his power and the bible expresses says at the last day his heart was so vexed his heart was so heavy burdened because he loved this woman he thought he, he thought she loved him back you see that's the problem the enemy is not loving you back he's playing the role of loving you He's giving you the idea that he cares. He's giving you the idea that you are important and you are the only person for him. He makes you fall in love with him. But his heart is not with you. That's why she says, how can you tell me that you love me but your heart is not with me? What does she mean? She means, you tell me you love me, but I don't know the secret of your power. 
I don't know you as a person. You never, you, you're not trusting me with that, that information. You're not trusting me with the information that, to show me that you love me. How many times are we thinking that a circumstance is good for us, situations is good for us, people is good? How many times are we being misled by Satan? How many times are we falling into the trap of Satan? How many times is Satan stealing our power, our strength, our connection with God? Makes us blind. Put us on the mill like a donkey to mill for him. And you know what? When you're at the mill, a lot of people, many people think it's over. Many people has lost their, their hope. Many people has lost their calling. Many people has lost, because they've lost their power, they have lost everything. They have lost their worth living. They have lost the world to live. They have lost everything because we are milling for Satan all around, all around, all around, all around. You know what's the worst thing of all of this whole passage is that Samson said to her, if you cut off my hair, my power will leave me. And this is the last, the, this is the bad part. He says, now I will become like any other man. God never intended for us, the church, the body of Christ, to be like any other man. Because he's like Wednesday night's message. He says, I've called you to be a peculiar people, a holy nation. You are the light of the world. You are the salt, the salt of the earth. We are not supposed to be like any other man. We are supposed to be the power of God in this world. We are supposed to, where we move, things must change. What we say, it will happen. When we call upon the Lord, He will answer. This is what the body of Christ should be like. Not sleeping with the enemy, not getting our, our, our heads shaven, not losing our power, not trading the relationship with the Father, that deep relationship where, where we draw our strength from, that connection, not trading it for the, with the enemy. For what? For a one night stand. Because that night was the last night with, with, with Delilah for Samson. She never looked at him again. I don't think she saw him again. She maybe mocked him still. What a shock to open your eyes to realize I can't see. To realize but I, the, my calling that I had for the Lord is been gone, is gone. My strength that I had to drive out devils and demons, my, my authority is gone. I can't slay. The, the enemy anymore. I can't slay 10,000 people with a, with a donkey jawbone because I can't. I'm just like them. You see, the church became like the world because we've slept with the enemy and we've lost our calling, we've lost our power, and we lost our ability and our authority. That's why the world laughs at us. Because we are just like them, blind. We became ordinary. There's no strength, no calling. Imagine again, I bring you back to that, to that idea of 10,000 people trying to capture one guy. Imagine they know. We can't, we, we can't nothing can contain this guy. No jail because he rips out the, the gates. No rope because he breaks it. There's nothing that takes, it's like a lightning bolt. It, it, there's nothing, nothing exists to, to captivate or to capture a lightning bolt. Am I right? Now Samson was like a lightning bolt. There's nothing that, con, con, that could contain him. Nothing. Why? Because he had the power of the Almighty. Yeah. You and I, Satan must not know how to captivate us. Because there's nothing that exists in his kingdom 
that should be able to captivate us. Because every time He tries to bind, to bind us, we should be able to get free. Every time He's putting something on us, it should fall, just fall off. Every time He puts you in a jail, you rip out the, the, the doors. We, the, the children of God, should be the most powerful force in the world. You know what? Again, I say what I said so many times. Wherever the church is moving, wherever the, the body of Christ is moving, Satan is supposed to flee due to our presence. Not due for who we are. No, for who He is in us. Wherever my shadow is falling, Satan must run. Have you, have you had it in your life that you just walk into a, a place and some people just dislike you? And you don't know why. People someone start fighting with you and you, you haven't even said a word. Have you had that in your life? Well, it happened many times in my life. Even with clients. All of a sudden, the client doesn't like me, he fires me. But just a, a few months later down the line, I, just, I, I heard that everything went haywire on the side and God pulled me out, he protected. But it's because of the spirit in me and the spirit in that person that he cannot withstand the spirit within me. Because the Bible says, he that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. Now I'm telling you today again, I say this church, the body of Christ should be the most powerful weapon that God has on this world. Satan is supposed to flee. He's not, to come, he's not supposed to come and sit in the churches, man. Do you know why he's in the church today? Because the church has slept with the enemy. And the church betrayed the, the relationship with God. We, are, we, we betrayed our connection. We betrayed the power of God. That's why we became powerless. That's why Satanists can come and sit amongst us. He, can't, he doesn't have to flee. Why? For what? There's no power. We are blind. We don't even pick them up. We are blind. We don't see them. We don't see the liars. We don't see the fornicators. We don't see anyone because we are blind. Because we've slept with the enemy and we've lost our ability. We've, slow, we've lost our power. We've lost everything that God gave us to say, go therefore and do my will. Where are you this morning? Are you part of that group that, that, that has slept with the enemy some, some time ago? Or maybe still sleeping? I don't know. Are you powerful? Let me tell you the, the phenomenon that's, now, that's going on now. And correct me if I'm wrong. Satan is hitting the children of God on their prayer life. That they're battling and suffering to pray. Why? Because he knows that's the power station. He knows that is where their strength is lying. He knows if he can keep the body of Christ out of the presence of God, they will become weak. He can shave our heads. That's what he's doing. Mr. and Mrs., where are you this morning regarding Samson's life? Are you still that powerful man or woman that can slay 10,000 for God? Or are we playing the game with, with Delilah? Are we at that place where we are playing with sin? Playing with Delilah? Let's see what's happening. Let's see if she can bind me. Let's see what she, what she can come up with. Because listen to the, his last words before he lost his power. He says, I will go free as all the other times. Little did he know, the Bible says, that God left. How, what an accusation just to imagine God has left His bride, His church, His people. What an accusation to imagine that God withdrew Himself from His people because these people went and slept with the enemy. His people told the enemy the secrets of God. 
Imagine. God is not in the church anymore. Who are we worshiping? Who are we following? Who are we serving? You see, we don't think about these things. We think, we think we can still taste of the little bitter water of the world. And then someday we can come and drink of the sweet water. God says we are lukewarm and He will spit us out because we have lost our taste. I urge the body of Christ today. Start with verse 28. Judges 16 verse 28 that says, And Samson cried out to God, Please, Lord, just hear me. Hear me, I repent. I have slept with the enemy. I have told them my secrets. I have allowed them to come into my life and to occupy my, the time that I'm supposed to spend in the connection with the Father. I gave my time and my effort to them and I started playing a game to see what they can do. Because you see, Samson became arrogant. He, came, he became reckless with the power of God. Which was not his power, it was God's to give or to take. We are not supposed to become arrogant. We are not supposed to become reckless with the power, with the Holy Spirit, the power of God. We are supposed to honor the God. Because that power can be taken away from us. It's not, our, it's not ours to keep or to be given, but it's God's. My friend, I want to ask you this morning, have you slept with, Del with Delilah? And have you told her your heart's secrets? And did she shave you already? Have you lost your power? Did the enemy come to take you captive? Pinch out your eyes? Or did he go as far yet to put you on a mill that you mill for him? Where in this categories that I just named for you, where are you this morning? Where are you this morning? I want you to close your eyes for one second. And I want you to, I want to speak to the audience at home. And I want to ask those people that are sitting at home and watching us by, by the internet, if you are one of those men and women that can confess this morning that says, but I have slept with the enemy. I've lost my power. I've lost my, my will even to go to church. I've lost my will to serve God. I can't hear God's voice. I'm battling to hear His voice. I've got good news for you today in saying, God is saying this morning to you, He wants to restore you. He wants to restore your connection. He wants to rest restore your power. He wants you to be able once again to slay 10,000 for Him in His name. But then, the requirement of that is that you will leave Delilah and come back home to the Father. So I want to ask you this morning, right where you are, please go on your knees and ask God to repent first of all the circumstances and everything that you gave up, where you've slept with the enemy, all the sin and the things that you allowed in your life that, that robbed you from your freedom and your, your joy, your ability to live for the King. I want to ask you this morning that you will Go right there where you are on your knees and pray and ask the Father like Samson. Call out to the Father and say, Father, please hear me. Ask Him forgiveness and ask Him to restore whatever you lost in your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless. For those who are here at home, 
I want to ask you this morning, that, keep your eyes closed, please. It has got nothing to do with anything and anybody else. How many of us have slept with the enemy? Trading our power, our freedom. You know, Samson was a free man. He could come and go as he pleases. But the moment that he's lost his power, he became the slave of the enemy, of the enemy. The exact, listen to me, the exact one, the exact people that he was fighting, killing and destroying, he became the slave of that exact people. The day we got born again, we got sent out to say, go then and kill to des and destroy all the works of the enemy. Did we become the slave of that same enemy this morning that makes us and render us powerless? Stole our joy, stole our peace, stole our freedom. Are you milling for him? Are you feeling that you're walking day by day, day by day, around the same little axle, milling for Satan, doing what he wants you to do, feeling what you, he wants you to feel, thinking what he wants you to think? Or are you free, working, working, living, living for Jesus? Like I said, I've got good news this morning from heaven. Heaven says, I want to restore you. Jesus says, I'm calling you this morning. Just hear my voice. I want to restore your power. I want to restore your position as my, my child, as my warrior. I want to, call, I want to restore you. I want to give you back your eyes. I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. I want to make you free out of the prison of Satan. Have you fallen into the trap? Did you take the bait of Satan? If you need, if you want to answer God this morning on his calling and to say, I want to restore you. I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. And I want to set you free. I want you to stand right where you are. I want you to stand right where you are. If you can be man and woman enough this morning to say, Lord, I have slept with the enemy and I became powerless. I gave up my secrets. I became imprisoned. I became enslaved. I've lost my eyes. I can't hear the voice of God. I can't see his hand. I became a slave to Satan. I'm doing the will of Satan. For maybe for so long, maybe for not for long. But this morning the Father is calling us to liberty, to freedom, to say, my child, come back. I want to make you free. I want to deliver you. I want to heal you. I want to set you free. I want to give you back your power. I want to give you back your eyes. I want to give you back your joy, your peace, your happiness. I want to restore everything unto you. I want you right where you are standing. Raise your hands to heaven and speak to the Father. Do like Saint, uh, Samson and say, oh Lord, just hear me. Hear my cry this morning. Hear me. Hear me. Restore me. Set me free again. The anointing is in this house this morning and He wants to set you free. All He's asking of you is just Reach out now and with all your heart, with all your might, reach out to Him. 
Apparently, he can't do anything for you. I'm just merely the messenger. Father, we stand before you, before you this morning with I don't know what you see, Lord, but maybe you see brokenness. Maybe you see slaves that's bleeding because we're not milling fast enough and Satan is beating us. You see someone, you see your church as blind because we've not no eyes. We've lost our eyes. We've lost our ability. We've lost your spirit somewhere along the line. The gifts of the spirit, we've lost it. We've lost the ability to hear your voice. We ask this morning, oh God, hear us once more and restore unto your church. Restore unto us our position. Restore unto us our authority. Restore unto us our power. Although our, our hair might have grown, but we haven't got the power again, Lord. We please, we ask that you will restore our power. Restore our position. Restore our youth. Restore our, our whole image. That we, may, that we may be the sons and daughters of the Most High. The power that we will become that powerful force through which God can slay the enemy ten thousands on ten thousands of demons principalities and powers let our shadow become the power of God that even where we walk Lord that Satan will flee in our presence that Satan will flee that Satan will not be able to withstand him that's living within us, that is stronger than he that's in the world. Lord, let the Holy Spirit become that most powerful, bigger, biggest force in our life again, like never before in this world. Restore unto us, Lord Jesus. Restore your church. Restore your body. Restore us for your name's sake. Like, Saint, like Samson says, Lord, that we can avenge every soul that Satan has stolen. That's already passed on. Lord, that we can revenge it and destroy His works. And Lord, the Word of God says that when, when you restored Saint, uh, Samson's power, he destroyed in that one day more than he ever destroyed in his whole life. Lord, I pray that you will restore your people in the name of Jesus, that we might revenge and avenge the deaths of so many people who has died without Christ. By stealing, killing, and destroying the works of, of Satan and the enemy in people's lives. Father, we call unto you this morning that you will restore your church. That you will restore your body. That you will give your strength, your power, your spirit. That you will pour out your spirit and your fire upon your people in Jesus' name. That we will not be enslaved anymore. That we will not be sitting and milling or walking milling day by day around the mill for Satan. Doing the will, feeling the will and occupying the will of Satan. But that the will of Satan will be removed this morning. That the, 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 the doors of the jail will fly open this morning. And that we will walk out in freedom and in liberty in Jesus' name. Lord, for too long, the body of Christ has played the games of Satan. For too long, we have played and we've, we, we looked at what sin can do to us. For too long, the church was powerless. For too long, we became so self-absorbed. For too long, we were, we, we were without the Spirit of God. Lord, I pray, especially in this house, 
and that you, I pray my prayers that you will start in this house, that you will baptize these people and all of us, me included, Lord, all of us, baptize us, rebaptize us with your fire and your spirit and gives us a new, a new testimony, a new power, a new strength, a new vision, Lord Jesus, that we will be going out there and wherever we go, with whoever we touch, that the Holy Spirit will touch and change people's lives, that the Holy Spirit will impact people's lives to such a degree that life will be changed instantly. And that the signs that the Bible calls, says, these signs will follow, will start, will start following the body of Christ again in the name of Jesus. And Father, the biggest part of all is, is that the Holy Spirit will start working together with the body of Christ ever again. Like we in the days of, of the apostles, Lord, that he will be able to manifest and to, to, to confirm the word of Christ by signs and wonders. Lord, revive your people. Revive your body. Restore your, the beauty of your body, of, of, the, of the, the body of Christ. Restore the beauty and the power of the body of Christ. That we will become the powerful ones once again for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that Satan will flee. Not be able to, to, to stand against the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray this morning. Restore unto your house the power and the strength and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name.